into the game. Alright, so, this is going to be Fighting Spirits, so it's the first game of the three games. And, at the top right location, we have the Orange Zerg Alrem Castro. And his opponent, at the bottom right location, is going to be the White Terran Netwars Koget. Now, both of these players, really good players. They have a different, a little bit of a different style. Koget is the kind of player that actually really likes to go to a little bit of a later stage of the game. He enjoys the idea of going to the late game. Castro, I would say that at least some time ago, when I used to know him and how he played, he didn't like too much going to the late game. He liked a lot more to be aggressive in the mid game, try to get an early advantage for himself in that time. Now. We'll see how this goes, however, because in Fighting Spirit, it is relatively easy and also common for the Terran to go for a fast expansion, and the third is also relatively easy to take, so probably it's not going to be exactly easy for Castro to break through. Now, the first question is going to be, is Castro going to be going for a fast expansion? It seems like he's banking some minerals. And so far we see an extra drone, no spawning pool yet. So it does seem like it's going to be a 12 hatch. Now on the other side we have Koget going for a standard depot, barracks. So far he's producing mostly SCVs, uh, most likely trying to get an expansion. However, because of how this build works, usually when your first SCV scouts your opponent, if you get the lucky of course, which seems like Koget might not, be. You know when to, if you want to put the um, the expansion or if you want to just maybe buy a little bit of extra time until you can get that because if the Zerg is really aggressive and you go for that kind of build you might die instantly. Now today many turns have the micro to deal with this kind of attack but it's not always that easy. So we see the second SCB as you can see going out. It's not exactly timed perfectly but the both SCVs should at least give enough information for Koget to know if he, sorry, if he can get a fast expansion. Now, as soon as he sees that there is actually a hatchery down here, he should probably be relatively f uh, safe to get this natural. He's seeing also the third hatch and the spawning pool not finished. So that gives enough information for Koget to go for his own expansion. Now, because this actually is a 3 hatch before gas, as far as I recall, the way this works is when you get 3 hatch first, you will have slightly later muters, but you can make pretty much 9 at the same time. Whereas if you get the gas a little bit earlier, your muters arrive a little earlier, but you're not going to have as many of them. Now, let's see, on the Koget side, he is getting the gas. And at the same time, trying to put a depot in the position that will slightly create a small wall. Pretty standard stuff. Now we see four Zerglings, one chasing the SCV, three going to scout the Terran. Now these Zerglings shouldn't do anything against three Marines and perhaps this SCV if it's still there. However, it is always annoying a little bit if you lose these early Marines because you could be open to some counter attack, uh, sorry, for some uh, speed link bust. Now we do see gas being mined and let's see where the first 100 gas goes. Well, so far we don't see here the lair, we don't see it here and we don't see it here. So no lair just yet. Oh, there we go. So just a little bit delayed. Not a massively, just a little bit. And go trying to take down this overlord. Uh, getting it is going to be slightly complex because all these marines have to really keep... You have to babysit these marines a lot and you could still lose them to a few zerglings, so... Oh, there we go. So one marine pushing from this side, another three from this side. Pretty smart move. Now, these zerglings might actually catch some of these marines. And Koget, interestingly enough, by seeing with this SCV the extra zerglings, goes back. Oh, whoa. That's a mineral walk. He goes back to make sure that he doesn't lose the Marines. So the SCV staying alive for that long was pretty good. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the extra scouting. Now, we do see a 
Starboard, a very early starboard. He's still on one fact. Uh, sorry, one barracks. So he's extremely defensive on this position. He should probably add another another depot here, a bunker. Yeah, usually. Actually, well, that's a lot of zerglings. Do we have speed incoming? Speed is about to finish. This can be really dangerous. That's a decent amount of speedlings. Is the bunker gonna finish in time? Speed is done. The bunker is going to. Yeah, it's gonna finish. And one zerglings is gonna scout it. Now, to be fair, you can still run through with these zerglings, but. Then, if you lose them, you're basically losing everything. So, yeah, a little bit more. Not Castro doesn't really want to push the pressure, push the the issue here. He is adding now. Now we do see Kogut now adding a few more barracks, but he's going for this extremely, extremely fast. I mean, it looks like a drop because it, or no, oh Valkyries. This is going to be for Valkyries. So, look at this. Spire's not even finished, and Kogut has timed his Valkyries. So that he can get them, like, have two, maybe even three by the time the mutas get here. That's a pretty smart move. Now, we have to remember that Valkyries, although they're really good against mutas, they're actually very slow. So it's easy to get them sniped with a few Scourges. Unfortunately for, for Castro, I don't believe that he's going to be expecting to find that. Now, the scanning goes down just slightly after the Spire is finished. So while Koget knows that he does really might want to get these Valkyries, he doesn't know exactly if the mutas are already on the way, and because of that he might try to get some turrets? No. So it seems like Koget is pre pretty like confident that he can hold this with just his bio. Oh, there we go, there are the turrets. So he probably is going to try to contest this with just a few turrets. Uh, did that Zergling see that? Probably it did. Probably did. I don't know if Castro was paying attention to that because if he did see that, he could probably he should probably just completely bypass the mutas and go directly to something else. Because trying to go for mutas against Valkyrie Bio is I don't know if there's any harder counter to anything in the game more than that. Unless you're obviously going for like air units against something that doesn't shoot air. But in this case, it's like extremely difficult to break this position. How many Valkyries do we even have? We have one, two, and a third one on the way. Even two are going to be more than enough to really put a lot of damage on these mutas. Now, Koget, although he is starting to move out, he still has to be wary a little bit. Maybe there is a Hydroden. There is a Hydroden. The Lurker aspect is just being researched. So this army is going to probably head before that. Yo, you, yeah, exactly. You should see those mutas there. Where are the Valkyries? They're the Valkyries. There they come in. Now you're gonna see how soon. Oh no, okay. Oh, yeah, that's not a good trade. You don't want to be fighting that. Ooh, you can see how much damage that does. I mean, even though that was actually pretty good micro from Castro because he did take down one unit or two, his mutas really know that they're absolutely worthless at this point. And until Lurker Aspect is finished, this bio with the Valkyries that are not coming. Hmm, that's actually a surprise. You should probably bring them with this on attack. The, those Valkyries pretty much are going to make every single thing that Castro has useless. So, we're gonna see because I don't think this can be defended. I mean, some seconds are going down, which is very good. But that's actually costing also a lot of economy for Castro. Now, plus one is not finished. I thought the upgrade was relatively early for Kogut. But let's first look at this. Oh, that's the Scourge is trying to find out the Valkyries. But the Valkyries, yeah, there they are. I don't think the, the Zergling saw them. But Castro might actually intercept them based on the fact that where the army was. Hmm. This is still, like, this amount of investment for Sunkens, that's going to be fine if you survive for the next 5 to 10 minutes. But considering how much money went to that, this base, you know how much money this costed to Castro? He has the base, but he's not even mining from it yet. Now, Lurker Aspect is finished, and we have some Lurkers, so at least he can probably defend on the ground. Alright, so Valkyrie is trying to do some damage, not really doing anything because of the Hydras. And we have an elevator. Oh, man. 
Gobit is really playing this smart. I'm really impressed. He's getting the right moves. He's always one step ahead of Castro. Look at that drone massacre. That's going to kill pretty much everything because this this Hydro Force. Although it can get there, it's not going to get there in time before you lose all your economy there. And at the same time, these hydros have no upgrades. Now, yes, sure, that's still, like, it's gonna get cleaned up eventually because of the fact that there's a lurker. But a lot of that economy went down. And without an economy in this space, that's going to pretty much be game. I mean, you can see in the supplies, 40 against 80. Oof. Castro is in a world of trouble. He has 24 drones at this stage, so... I mean, I have to say that this is basically because Kogut really played this smartly, but... Castro just was not allowed to do anything in this game. Every move that he was trying to do was intercepted or preemptively by Kogut. Now, we do see some drones starting to mine in this base, but... Nope, that's actually not the smartest one idea. I mean, Kogan is really trying to put down more pressure, but at the same time, he should be really, like, trying to get another expansion. Because uh, there's zero, uh, there's zero things going on on his side of the map. And while he's producing a decent army, if this continues like this, and you're not able to do constant critical damage, Castro might actually get back to this. Like, he's still not even started with his hive. So, probably that's not gonna work. Oh, that's a standoff. Yeah, that's what I expected. One for one. Now, this army doesn't look too big, especially because there's no actually no medics at all. So Kogut, I have to say, he has been doing pretty well, but while this was going on, he's sli kind of transitioning to mech, but not really. You usually do it on three bases. If you do it on two bases, uh, you don't really have too much of an economy. I, I have to say, if this build by Kogut doesn't finish Castro off relatively early. The fact that he's not taking any other bases might actually get this game to equal. Oh, and nice reaction time. Alright, so Castro does survive this and he's going to probably get rid of these Marines. It's still annoying, still annoying. Looking at this, I mean, Castro is still in trouble. However, he is getting his Hive tech. And although Hive is just finished and you still have to get to the Defilers, because of the fact that Kogut is not trying to be aggressive with his full army at the same time as doing these kind of drops, he's actually allowing Castro to get back into this game. Castro is now mining on three bases, sort of. And, yeah, dropship dies. The push is not even started yet from Kogut. I mean, at some point, Kogut was twice the supply of Castro. And right now, Kogut is actually starting to look like he might be stopped by the Defilers. We do see him finally taking a third. So that's pretty good. Oh, and although, guys, I should tell that Kogut did mention a few weeks back to me that he's actually he has a broken thumb, so he's playing pretty much with one hand. So that might have something to do with this, but still. Okay, so those tanks... Whoa, actually, that defense matrix was pretty nice. And this attack is coming pre-swarm pre timing, so if you break through this position, and you kill the natural, you pretty much won the game as the Terran. So, Kogut should really be really trying to push this issue as fast as possible. Now, bear in mind that at the same time, as soon as Consume is finished, you are going to allow the Zerg to survive for a little while. However, with... I was going to say with vessels, but I don't see any vessel alive in here. If you do have vessels, you can s at least irradiate the defiler, making it a lot harder for the Zerg to survive this. And this is a massive amount of tanks at the same time, so it's not like this is a very, very, very slow push from the Terran. This is doing massive amounts of damage constantly. 
and I don't think Castro has any answer to this. Okay, so the Defiler is out, is getting the consumes, and... Okay, so it is going to get the swarm. It's going to stop this attack, at least for the moment. Now, while this is going on, Castro did take another base at 12 o'clock. And he is also being able to fully mine this base, so he is getting to a position where he might be able to turn this around. It's still going to be tricky because Koga does have full map control and he's even taking another expansion at this moment. So really, that's better. Not really going to just full attack, also getting your economy up at the same time. The amount of production is a little bit lackluster. We can see that this might have something to do with the fact that Koga is not be able to play at his full potential. However, he does still have map control. Alright, so this base, hmm, two tanks and a few marines, if there's no defiler, this is the defiler here, so if the defiler does land a swarm, which it should, yeah, this base is probably going to have to be evacuated. Now, as, as long as you evacuate most of the SCVs and you just leave the command center, most of the times you're not losing that much. And a massive force from Kogut is going to try to break this position, there is an Idas Canal. And the exit is not yet done, but I'm pretty sure that by the time that this tries to siege up and break this, the Nidus Canal is going to be finished. Let's see. Our unit is going to get through here. Oh, some lurkers. We do need a Defala. We need a Defala here. And the vessel. Waiting for that Defala. There's no Defala yet, so this force is still not going to stop this. There's the Defala. And an instant irradiate, however, unfortunately, it still lands this. But the tanks can still siege the, the hatchery, and as long as you lose the hatchery, that doesn't really matter. Okay, so another move out from Kogit. Sorry, for, for Castro, he's going to take down at least this few tanks at the front. However, I still think that this force is slightly too much to deal with this. Oh, and another swarm. So, so far pretty good. And... Is there going to be another swarm in here? Uh, no. No. Ah, uh, that tank, that tank. Ah, uh, that flank from Castro completely shutting this down. It was really close for, for a while there. I have to say, though, that this production from Kogut is really not looking too good. He is massively ahead in supply, but he's not been able to constantly use all of this army. He's basically making fire bats. Now, this is a, actually an interesting thing, because if you do want to go to this kind of game, where you know that you're slightly incapable of m managing your army perfectly, going for fire bats is relatively efficient, because they still hit lurkers on the swarm. Now, at the same time, we do see this one tank trying to clean this position. Unfortunately, there's still Lurka under Swarm. Now, bear in mind that actually Kogut is taking a lot of bases. And as soon as these bases are operational and he puts a few more factories, it's going to be really hard for Castro to get through this. Now, Castro does have some economy. Unfortunately, he is basically still on three bases. He's not yet mining from his 12 o'clock because he lost a lot of drones. So if Kogut keeps up this pressure, I do believe that at some point Castro is basically going to fall apart. Okay, so that's that's not good. But this, these Zergings are... I think they've been upgraded. They have armor, but they don't have any attack damage. Oof, I don't know. I, I just don't see Castro being able to break anything here, especially with the firebats. They can actually deal with Rookers under Swarm for a little bit. Oh, yeah, Kogut just missing a little bit there. Oh, oh, that's not going too well. Ah, good swarms. And the firebats, a scan goes down. And the firebats are gonna clean it. They're not gonna clean it, they're gonna clean it. Yes. So as you can see, everything on the swarm actually does die. And because of the fact that this was most of the army of, that Castro had to defend this location... Oh! Oh my god, mine's killing their own firebats. That's not, that's not nice, that's not nice. Kogan is still taking like a massive amount of, of bases, but... 
he's not been able to macro correctly. He has a small amount of minerals and gas, like it's not a massive bank. But he's still not producing full of extent that he could. Now he is at least trying to deny more bases, which is very, very, very important at this stage. But Castro is at least recovered some of his main army. Now, I have to say, the game is probably going to stabilize for a little bit, because in this moment, both players aren't really sure of how much each other has. And although Koget is the one who has a better economy at this stage, if he doesn't put any kind of pressure, and the Ultras are able to get under Swarm, perhaps even drops, <clears throat> it's not going to be easy for Koget to deal with this. Now, these Ultras are hiding, which, considering how many mines there are, kind of makes sense. I would like to see actually some battle cruiser maybe transition. I mean, I think Koget could actually afford it. Okay, so we're gonna have a push at the 12 o'clock. And yeah. It's gonna be actually quite tricky to deal with this. Now we see that only one lurker and one defier is gonna go that way. So probably gonna try to defend it with just swarm. And even a bunker here at this location, that's really, really strange. Okay, so this position probably is going to have to be given up. If one lurker with one defiler is not going to stop this. And especially because you can still shoot at the hatchery. Now, at the same time that all of this is going on, Koget is still not being able to take this space that he took early on. Probably just a little bit of a lackluster because of the amount of things that are going on. Okay, so lurkers are going to try to break through. They're gonna get some mine shots, but not enough to actually deal with this. And now ultras are out, although they don't have speed yet, so this is still relatively not that dangerous. And Koket doesn't actually have that much in his own basis. Oh, there we go, that's cleaned. And some of the irradiates are already going to go to these ultras. Now, I have to say, Castro is actually slowly but steadily breaking through this. Although, still, is there a defiler coming on? No defiler. Without a defiler, you should probably not be trying to push the issue in something like this, because the turn can still back off a little bit and shoot with the siege tanks, and... Oh, there is the defiler. So, Koget is actually starting to be in a little bit of trouble. As soon as the army of your opponent gets to your natural and gets under swarm, you are starting to be having some trouble to get out of your bases. Now, the 12 o'clock did go down, so again, Castro is actually down to one mining base. Ooh. Ooh, one mining base against a Terran who's still on full two mining bases, has some defense in these bases. So... No. Okay, none of these are going to get through. The, yeah, the SCVs are going to block. Very good. And because of this, there's still a lot more mining for Koget. Now, to be fair, though, uh, looking at this, I have to say that Castro did manage to get into a relatively good position, or in the mid-game at least. But, yeah, it's just... Look at... I mean, not only just the amount of units, but also the bank. The bank that uh, Koget has at this moment is massive. And although he doesn't really want to be losing expensive units like these, he still has other armies that he can use to put any counter pressure. Oh, and we do see this command center being denied. Although, I don't think that anything was mining in here. Alright, so... I mean... As much as Castro did make this game into an interesting position, I still feel that this is eventually not gonna work. Nope. Okay, you definitely don't want to be bleeding out these units as Koget. I mean, he still has a massive uh, supply lead, so he can definitely bleed a little bit, but he should probably try to use at least this army. I mean, in the early stage of the game, he was trying to do a lot of drops and at the same time trying to be a little bit 
uh, uh, efficient with his economy, but at this point he's basically just given away map control pretty much, considering that these are the only two armies that are there standing. And... Oh! Nice recast! Although, uh, again, Castro is really low on gas, he's got one mining base. At this point he should probably be trying to take another main or something, but... Sorry, another main, another base. But, yeah, even like these marines, look at that! Just microing a few marines to make sure that this base is still not able to be taken. Castro cannot allow this, he really needs those bases right now. Well, I think it's pretty safe to say that at this uh, at this point, uh, most of the things that Castro might try to do will not work. Uh, he doesn't even have defilers at this point. I, I'm trying to find if he does have anywhere. He doesn't have any defilers. Without any defilers, I mean, yeah, just it's just not gonna work. I don't know. I, I mean, the problem is not... He, Castro was denied from mining for such a long time that he really didn't have any way to put that much of pressure on Koget. And even that pressure that he put, which was relatively good, was not good enough to really slow down Koget. And with that, and with these positions... I mean, tanks are even up... Like, they have plus two attacks. So, even under Swarm, these units will still take some damage. Alright, so we see uh, Castro still trying to fight this, but I mean, when he sees this amount of tanks, and he's even losing his lurkers on the eggs before they hatch. Oh, there he goes. He's gonna try to break through. Oh, he might take some SVs. No, Kogut is... Yeah. Okay, so Castro realizes that, unfortunately, there was way too much economy for Kogut. Way too many units. I have to say, though, uh, he did make a good game out of it, even considering how bad of a position he was. Hmm. Oh, and Apocalypse did inform me that uh, Remag did actually win his game. So, uh, Remag actually won the third game against uh, Chikiban? I think, yeah, Chikiban. Okay, so we got that. Now, we're going to be going to game number two between 